What is going on you guys? My name is Stephen Farrell and I'm a visual artist, a podcast host, a mind coach and a motivational speaker and I'm based in Dublin in Ireland. For this project that I've been working on for the last while, I have been funded by the Irish Arts Council. So I want to say a big huge thank you to the Irish Arts Council for funding this project. I'm incredibly grateful for it and it was an incredibly fun project to do. Over the course of the project, and what, what it is basically is a project of how to step-by-step -step painting tutorials. The project is inspired by the animals of Irish mythology. In this episode, what we're going to cover is the swan. Now the swan, if you know much about Irish mythology, the swan pops up quite a bit, most notably of course, and best known in the story of the children of Lear. Over the course of this series and in each episode, we're going to use pretty similar paints. The reason for that is I wanted to keep the material costs as low as possible. I didn't want to go out and start buying all artist quality everything and have you fray, uh, stretching your own canvas because that would have put you off more, most likely. I wanted th this to be as accessible, as easily accessible to as many people as possible. So everything I bought was as cheap as I could get it, unless I couldn't get it and then I used what I had. So we've got our three primary colors and I'm gonna put a link or I'm gonna put some information as to what you're gonna need. Three primary colors are red, our yellow and our blue. We've got black, we've got white. We also have burnt sienna, burnt umber and yellow ochre. But we're gonna cover that in a few moments. As I say, I'm gonna pop up the essential tools for this process and some paint brushes as well. The most important thing and the, uh, the best part of this is it's about having fun and expressing yourself creatively. And that was really my goal with this. So again, before we move on to, to the first in the series, the first episode, I'd like to say a huge thank you to the Arts Council of Ireland. I'm incredibly grateful for that support. Enjoy this. Any comments that you wanna leave in the comment box, please do. And if you wanna get in touch with me, if you get these paintings done, I'd love to see them, I really would. So link them into my email. You can find my, my website details here, stephenfarrell.ie, or you can send them to my Instagram. All of that will be linked, I'm sure, in the notes of this. And yeah, let's get going and let's have fun. So what we're going to do in this episode is we're going to draw a swan or at least start drawing uh, by drawing a swan and a swan's head and its neck coming down the page here. Now it's only going to be one swan and it's going to be inspired by the swans of Irish mythology. So the children of Lear that you might all know the story of. Now of course with the children of Lear there were four swans in that, but we're only going to do one. You can multiply it yourself, of course, if you want to. Now, in terms of starting a swan, and we all know what swans look like typically, and we're gonna go white swans. We're, we're using colors, and I'm gonna go through the color palette in a moment. I have showed you a picture already of the color palette, the colors you're going to need, and they're going to be nice, um, warm colors. Very similar to the horse painting that I've already done. So, so when, when we start, what we're going to do is draw a circle up around here, a circle or an oval shape. I mean, it doesn't have to be, now I'm going to darken it a little bit. We are going to be going over this with, with paint, of course. So don't worry too much about the, the tone of the pencil that we're using. So it's a 2B pencil and we're leaving relatively dark marks on it. Now, now that I have the circle drawn, I'm going to come out of it with almost a, a curved line coming down and that's gonna form the back part of the neck. Now, I'm going to do another one just in front of it and that's going to be forming the front part of the neck. So you can already see the kind of shape that we're going for. The head of the swan, I want it to be much more oval than it is. So I'm going to use the circle that I have and I'm just going to make more of an oval shape. I'm not gonna be as dark with this in terms of, of the marks. And here we go. So we're looking for a kind of shape like this. And of course, the swan's beak is going to come straight down. So we're gonna do a straight line here for start of the beak. Now, any of the marks that we're making, we're going to be able to cover over them. If we, we put them in the wrong places, 
we can cover over them with, with paint later. So this is really just the foundations, the blueprints really, of the overall painting that we're going to do. So this is the beak, there we go. And then from here, as we know, swans have this lump coming out and I do know what it's called, which, but I've forgotten. So I don't know, you can put it in the comments or it probably doesn't even matter. I'll, I'll put the name in here actually. So we've got the beak here. We've got the kind of jaw area. We've got the, the swan's neck coming down here and we've got the head. There we are, super. There we go. So you can kind of see your swan developing out here. Let's give the swan a little eye and then we are going to um, draw in this line. So this is the kind of black area just above the beak of the, the area, the name I can't remember that I'm gonna pop up now. Now swans have noses, so we're gonna give them a little nostrils there and there we go. Okay, so this is pretty much what we're looking for in terms of, of our swan's head. Okay, so once we have that done, what we're going to do is move on to our, our painting. So we're gonna paint in the background just to kind of block out the background and, and the, the shape of the swan, and then we're going to develop the swan. Now, of course, you can do any color you want for the background, but for the purposes of this painting, I have decided to make it a pink-ish background. So we're gonna go a bit pink. So there we go. Just because, and I know a lot of you are probably saying, well, there wouldn't be pink in the background for Swan. The point is you can, you can make this any color you like to fit any room you wanna put it in or, or anything. And I've already painted a, a, a blue background on one of my other paintings, so. Let's go pink for this one. So we're just going around the shape of the swan. As you can see, I'm over going over some of the lines, some of the pencil lines here. Now this pink that I've created is just that red that I have, the cadmium red and mixed with titanium white. That is it. That's all you really need. Now you can go for different shades of, of pink, but you'll need different reds for that, of course. Um, or just add more uh, titanium white to it. So as you can see here, I'm adding more titanium white and it's giving me a much lighter pink. So you can play around with the background depth and tone and texture and, and it can be a flat tone or it can be much more um, tonal in different sections, depending on what you want. This is really about what you want. It's about having fun and enjoying the process. So there we go. Now I'm going to move on from this brush. This brush is great in certain circumstances, but its bristles are a bit soft. So they're not giving me, they're not gonna give me the, the fine line I'm looking for when I'm getting closer to the details on, on the swan. So it's this one, it has a flat head there. I'm gonna pop that in my water and I'm gonna jump onto the number 10 Filbert brush. It's a System 3 Filbert brush and I'm going to use it just to come in closer. The bristles are much stronger on this, so it allows me more control over where I want the paint to go. So I'm almost drawing it in here. So I'm coming in just a little bit closer. If you go over anything or if you don't go close enough, don't worry, we're gonna be coming back to this. This block color I'm putting in the background is not the final color, of course. So I'm just gonna spin this around a bit and I'm just going to come in to these sections on the swan. There we go. So as you can see, we've got our swan head, really easy to make out. You know what you're looking at. That's always important. Well, not always important. I mean, we do have abstract art and, and it, it, it doesn't always look literally like the, the image, I, I certainly painted a collection of, of abstract landscapes inspired by Yeats and the landscapes of Sligo and they were, they were metaphoric, um, I suppose, if, if we're talking about the colors and the tones and, and the texture I used, they weren't quite literal in terms of looking like the landscapes of Sligo. So, and the work by Yeats is, is WB Yeats, of course, and it is his poetry, mainly. 
So there we go. We got our background blocked in. I'm gonna jump onto my trusty hairdryer. There we go. So why do I use a hairdryer? Well, the reason I use a hairdryer is it, it speeds up the, the drying process of the acrylic. Now you'll find with acrylic, because it is water-based, if you're in a warm room, it's going to dry much quicker. If you're in a, a, a less warm room, it might take a bit longer. So to speed up the process, I use a hairdryer and it's brilliant. Oil is quite different. So oil, of course, is oil-based. So it doesn't, it doesn't dry by evaporation, it dries by oxi oxidization. There we go. So if you're using oil, you gotta let it oxidize um, rather than, you can't use a hairdryer on it, basically. So don't. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do now is fill in the beak of this swan. Now, what I've done is I've taken the yellow that we're using and I've taken some red. So what I wanted to do, and the reason we were limited, quote unquote, in terms of the colors that we're using is because I didn't want to give you a list of 10 different colors. You could have very easily gone and bought 10 different colors, an orange or two different, three different types of red or yellow or whatever. But we can mix all of the colors pretty much from all of the primary colors that we have. So the three primary colors that we have, we can mix other other colors from. Now you can hear my, my dog barking there in the background. She is agreeing with me. So what I'm doing in this case is I'm mixing yellow and red. The beauty about being able to mix your own colors and not actually buying a, a standard color, so like a cadmium orange or something, is you can get exactly the tone you're looking for once you start with the correct colors. So this is a bit yellow or is a bit warm, a bit red for me. So what I'm going to do is put in a bit more yellow and this, again, like the background color, it's only really a, a, a base color giving us guidelines. We're gonna be coming over this and over it again and again and again. So we're gonna do it a few times. So I can take the color up and I can take it down. I can change around the tone. So I don't mind that color. It's not what I want, but I'm, it's just a, a placeholder, let's just say, a foundation for what I'm going to put in. Now, I'm gonna leave that to dry itself. I might use the hairdryer, but the reason I'm leaving it is I'm going to be working on the body here. I'm not gonna be coming near this part, so I'm not gonna run the risk of touching it or, or going over it as I just touched it. So <laughs> don't do what I just done. Now what I want to do, I wanna keep this swan nice and warm in terms of its tones. I am going to be putting gray on it, but I'm going to use the Mars gray that we, we have here. And the Mars gray is a nice warm gray. Now I'm only going to be using gray a little bit. I'm gonna come over it quite a bit. So this might look dark to start, but again, it's really just base foundation stuff. I'm going to lift it very much and make it much warmer. I'm gonna bring in some nice warm tones into it, but I really just wanna know where I'm going in terms of shadow and shade. So I'm going to paint here really nice and gently. I'm not overloading the, the painting with pigment. Just bringing it down. The brush is nice and dry. It's a nice dry brush technique that, that can be used. So it's not overloading the, the canvas. We're just doing it nice and dry brush, just to give a kind of guide as to where I wanna go. Now at this point, if I want to, and I do want to make the neck a little bit more curved, I can do that. So you can do lots of different things, certainly at the start, certainly with, with acrylic paint. That's why I love acrylic so much. You can go over it and you can go over it. The same with oil. The only one you can't really go over is watercolor. Once the watercolor is down, you've kind of committed. So there you go. You gotta, you gotta commit to, to, to where you're laying your, your colors and your paint with watercolor, not so much with acrylic. Because as you will see, I'm going to be going over this again and again. The reason I'm using a dry brush technique on this as well is because I want to give a bit of texture to, to the bottom part of uh, the, the background essentially of 
the, the neck and we're going to build up into the foreground, I suppose. But I want to give texture in the background to make it look like feathers. So I want to, you'll see where I'm going with it, but I'm just kind of doing a scrubby kind of um, dry brush technique now, just to give me what I want. So just kind of give it a little scrubs. As you can see, there's only bits of the paint being left behind, exactly what I'm looking for. Now I did say at the start, we're going for a white swan. So bear with me, trust the process. It will be a white swan. If anyone's looking at my water, I don't know if you can see it. If anyone's looking at my water thing, um, yes. Thanks for reminding me, Stephen, and anyone out there shouting, wash your brushes. There we go. It's important to wash your brushes because if you don't, now when I say wash your brushes and they were in water, of course, but if you leave your brush in water, after a while, it starts to kind of curve and it can be hard to get the, the angle you're looking for. Now, if you're looking at this filbert, there are curves on, on the ends, but that's because of the technique I use, like the, the scrubbing technique there. I actually like that as well for various different reasons we'll go into in a while. But what I want to do now is, with the dry brushing technique, friction also helps the paint to dry. So that's actually pretty dry. So I don't need to get the trusted hairdryer that saved me in a lot of circumstances and situations um, out right now. But what I wanna do is come in with black. Now that's a bit too black for me. So I'm going to get some titanium white. And again, we're using Mars black, titanium white, and I'm just going to very gently draw in this section of the swan. There we go, super. And this is the front part there. Now, as far as I know, you can use this part that I'm gonna put up the name of right here. You can use this part to tell if it's a, a male or a female swan. I think if it's larger, it's a male, and if it's not as large, it's a female. I think I'm going to just double check that, but I believe that's true. Okay, so here we go. This is the nose part of the swan. Now what I'm also going to do is just paint in where the eye will be. I'm gonna come into this eye and give it definition and color, but that's basically what I'm looking for. So as you can see, your swan, I mean, it's a swan. Obviously you're looking at it, it's a swan. Now on the front of the swan's beak, they have this little black mark. And then this paint is getting a little bit too dry for me so i'm going to add some water to it and i'm going to that allows me to draw almost like and i did say this in, in another video and not that i've ever used it but what i imagine eyeliner is like it just flows from what i believe eyeliner um to flow like so there we go it's nice and flowy it's going to block it in a little bit more super now i'm going to grab my hair dryer and just dry that because there is quite a lot of pigment there, a lot of wet paint, and I don't want to bring it across the paint. Brilliant. Now, earlier on, I said I wanted to make the, the, the swan painting needs to be a white swan. So what I'm going to do now is come into it with some titanium white and a little bit of, okay, not pink. There we go. I was putting it on the pink part. When you have a palette, it is nice to keep the palette clean. This is not a clean palette. Don't follow my, my instructions on palettes or follow my lead there because I don't know where anything goes. So I'm gonna pull it around a little bit. Basically what I'm looking for, I'm going to grab a bit of titanium white and some yellow ochre. Now in another video, I was calling this raw sienna. It ain't raw sienna, it's yellow ochre and I've been using it forever. And I can't believe I forgot what it was called. Anyway, there we go. So I've got yellow ochre and I've got burnt umber beside it. I'm just going to come in here nice and gently and just bring this color in. Now this is going to give me the definition that I'm looking for. And the same up around here, just to block in some of the, the shapes. Now we're going to move the the paintbrush back this way, rather than coming down here, we're moving it back this way to give the idea that there's a flow to the, the feathers of the swan, and there would be. So 
The Philbrook brush that I'm using has kind of curves on the top of it. That's the bristles just curving from the techniques that I use. But it, it allows me to get this lovely mark making. There we go. So you can see there are lines here. Of course, that the swan doesn't have hair. I get that. But it has feathers. And this, as we build up from the bottom, we're going from the bottom up, of course, as we build it up, as we move into much brighter colors, more titanium white, we are going to see this tone and texture coming in from the bottom and it will give the look that we're going for. Now this can take a little bit of time. So we're just going to go down through the swan. If you want to pause me, you can do that yourself or you can follow me. As you can see, these are lovely marks that are being made here by this filbert brush. So there we go. So again, you can go ahead and you can pause me, take as much time as you need on this step. Nice and gentle, just go with the flow. And there is no rush on this at all. This is about having fun. So that's the most important thing, of course, about painting. You have fun with the process and it's about expressing yourself. You can follow what I'm saying. You can follow the techniques that I, I'm I'm showing you, or you can do your own thing. But the, the end goal is really for you to find your own creative voice so you can do your own thing and what's right for you. So there we go. We're going to bring this up here now. Awesome, super. What I want to do now is, and if you have a cup, if you have a coffee cup or if you have any other form of liquid that you're drinking out of, maybe um, that might be white or red, if you get me, Try not to put your paintbrush into it because that can quite often happen. I'm looking for a paintbrush and I don't know where it is and it turns out it is in my cup. <laughs> and then I can't drink <laughs> my cup or my glass. Anyway, so there we go. I'm going to come back into the, the beak here with some yellow and it's straight up yellow. So there's no, I haven't put any mix into it. I haven't made it a orange. It is straight up yellow. I'm gonna bring that in here. I'm gonna do this a few times because I wanna build up the tone. It, it, the beak of the swan does change from the tip of it as it comes up. It, it tends to get a bit lighter. So it's more warm, more red, orange here, and it comes up into a more yellow. Now that might take a little bit of time. So I'm just gonna apply that, leave it. And I wanna do some work on the bill, I'm gonna say bill. I've already put up the word, you know what it is, this black part. Because it's too flat now, and I don't want it to be flat. It has to be much more 3D. So I'm going to come into it with a mix of probably 50-50 titanium white and Mars black. And I'm just going to come in here and just give it some definition. Now it does kind of come up this section as well of the swan. And there we go, we're gonna bring it in here. Again, this is all going to be brought up and brought down. Any of the marks that we're making now can be and quite possibly will be painted over in a, a lot of cases. For most of these marks, they will be painted over at least once more. So there we go. This is exactly what I'm looking for. Now with the eye, I'm going to just come in again with the eye here and just give it a little bit of a brightness to it now okay I'm gonna come back onto that shortly but this is kind of what we're doing we're just building it up nice and gently there we are super now I'm going to wash this brush and this is the brush that I'm using I'm gonna pop its name up here it's a three I think three and one eighth uh, inch I think anyway they're brilliant brushes I love using them I use them for all of my fine detail stuff if you're looking at the fox or even the horse video that I've made, you'll see how I use them for, for the kind of fine hair details. Now what I want to do is just pop in here with a bit more black and titanium white, probably three or four times the titanium white to black, but I just wanna bring it in here behind the eye just for a little bit of definition here. And there we go. I'm gonna bring it in under the chin as well and just give a bit of shape, super. Now, I might put a little bit here too. Now, 
I love the background color. I want to change it around a little bit. The horse painting, I don't know if anyone has done that yet, but in the horse painting, it, it's almost not quite a flat tone in the background, but this one I want it to be much more dynamic. So I'm going to get some titanium white and I'm gonna get some of that red as well, and it's a cadmium red, and I'm gonna mix it on the canvas. So I want it to be much more dynamic, not as flat in terms of a color, and I'm gonna mix it on. Now, as I'm mixing here, I'm applying a bit more white, this is great, and just kind of where I want it to go. Awesome. And here we are, a little bit more red, kind of up and around here. And because I have this filbert, the, the size 10, I can bring this in nice and close to the beak. It gives me lovely control with its bristles. The bristles are nice and strong, even the ones that have, have twisted out a bit. And I'm gonna get just a block of red and bring it in here. Spin your canvas around if you need to. They're nice small canvases. The sizes were linked in earlier. I'm sure you already know the size. You're probably working on it right now. There we go. I'm going to bring that in here. Now, what I love about titanium white is it gives a lovely coverage. So because I am not getting rid of these blue pen or the, the pencil marks from the start, I'm going to put some titanium white on them and that should give me nice coverage there. And then what I can do is just Come back into this later with more red if I want to. If you're finding that the blending isn't quite going the way you want it to, rather than adding more paint, you can add water. As you can see there, it allows the flow of the paint to just go nicely. Because as we're blending, the friction that we're creating is helping to dry the acrylic. So you don't want to get to a point with blending that, well, maybe you do if, if it's your style, but you'd want to avoid, I, in my opinion, the point where the paint is starting to clump up. That's not what you're, you're looking for really. Now, because this is getting a little bit too close to the bill there, and this filbert is a little large, I'm gonna jump onto another. I do have a smaller filbert, we may or may not use it, but I'm going to jump onto maybe the other brush that I had just to give me that control that I'm looking for. So there we go, we're putting in, as you can see, they're different tones really nice kind of dynamic nice and fun as well and it's lovely for mark making and, and creating color and tone and, and that kind of thing so that's what i love about these kind of backgrounds they're kind of moody and atmospheric as well so there we go <laughs> Brilliant. okay super so as i said a moment ago i'm going to wash this filbert brush just get rid of it and i'm going to jump back in with this brush there we go can you see that and I want to bring in the red just a little bit closer here to the bill. There we go, in here. Yeah, okay. Awesome. And I'm almost just, while well, I'm painting, of course, but it's like I'm drawing the lines in that I'm looking for. Yeah. Now I can see a lot of the pen mark, the pencil marks that I made earlier. We were using a 2B pencil, which can be quite dark if you do apply it too strongly. It can be nice and light as well if, if you want it to be. The pencil marks can be really nice if you want to leave them. If you've ever looked at a painting, you see the pencil marks in the background. You can kind of see where the artist started. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, so it's up to you. What I'm doing is I'm taking some titanium white and I'm covering over some of them because I don't really want them there. They are not what I'm looking for. So there we go. I'm covering over those pencil marks with, with titanium white. I might take the red up into this later, just block red. We'll see. I might keep it pink. I don't know. I'll, I'll see how it goes. I'll see how I feel. And that's really important when you're painting. It's how you feel. There is no right way to do anything. No. Brilliant. What I'm going to do is get my hairdryer again. So I'm going to give it a blast because I want to get some more work done on the neck of the horse. Neck of the swan. There we go. So now what we're going to do is once that's dry, now it's still a bit warm, so just be careful with it. It's a little bit warm. 
We'll let that kind of cool down there for a second. And while we do, we're going to grab some more titanium white. Let me just see. Now, because I've messed up my easel a, a little bit, I have to apply more titanium white. So I am doing that. If you're using paint tubes rather than the, the tubs that I have here like these, if you're using tubes, put the cap back on because it's expensive enough without drying it out. Now, what I want to do is with this filbert brush is just go into this neck with strokes like this that are kind of building up the texture and the movement of the swan's feathers as you can see now this process takes a little bit of time so again you can pause me if you like and then come back to me in a few seconds i'm going to speed through this so how are we all getting on with the swan's feathers well i hope what I'm going to do now is just build it up a little bit more. So as you can see, I'm going to go in towards this black. And just when I'm applying the titanium white here, I'm leaving little bits of it behind. And that adds to kind of the texture. But as you can see, what I mean by little bits is with the paintbrush, some of it is being applied and it's like a little lump of paint. I'm going to leave that. I may go over it if it's still wet when I come back to it. But it does give a nice bit of texture. It's now, yeah, there we go. Exactly what I'm looking for. Now, this is a gradual process of building up bit by bit titanium white, nice light strokes of titanium white. I'm gonna come back over this with a technique called a uh, wash, and I'm gonna give it a wash of a different color, and then I'm going to give it a wash of titanium white. We're going to do that in a few moments. Before we do, I just want to jump back into this bill section, uh, that get the kind of nose area. So I'm going to grab more titanium white. I'm going to grab a little bit of Mars black, like tiny little bit, more titanium white. We're going to make it really, really gray. And we're just going to scrub in here, nice and gentle in circular kind of motions to give it a bit of, of a, a definition, making it look like it is circular and it is 3D rather than 2D because of course it is a 2D painting, but we're trying to make it look like it's 3D. So I'm just moving that in. Now I'm going to come back into this again with black, but this is just giving it a little bit of definition. What I want to do is pop in here really nice and close to the eye. Now I had too much paint there on, on my brush, so I've just taken a little bit of it off because I don't want to overload this part of it. I'm just coming into the eye here, and I'm going to just kind of move around here. I do have a finer brush that I'm going to use for this, but this brush, like the filbert I was talking about earlier, has really nice bristles. It allows me this kind of control that you don't always have with, with brushes. So I'm just going to get a little bit more black because I want to keep the definition as well around this. So I don't want it to blend into the to to the hair to the feathers. I just want to do this. There we go. Okay. So I'm just going to go around this section and just kind of bring it up and bring it down. Add a little bit of black. Take it back down, exactly like this, and just build some shade into it as well. There we are. Okay. Now. This bit is going here, okay, and this bit is coming up here. Brilliant. Not quite done with this yet, so I'm going to take a little bit more work, but it is where I want to go. Now, what I want to do with the bill is I just want to add a little bit of orange so we're going to take a little bit of yellow a little bit of red mix it up into a nice orange 
and then I'm going to take some titanium white and bring it down and make it a bit paler. So the reason for that is I want to bring in some definition here. Okay. A little bit of highlight. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm just going to bring it up around here. Now I've brought that into a bit of wet black. So I've taken some of that pigment. So what I'm going to do is stop. I'm going to get my hair dryer. I'm going to blast. <laughs> so there we go. So I'm going to let that cool down. Hair dryers are just the best invention ever. I'm going to clean off my brush and I'm going to come back in and I'm going to go over the section I was on. There we go. That's exactly what I want. Now these aren't the colors I'm looking for necessarily. I'm going to come back in with other colors. But this is really just building it up. I'm going to get some a little bit more white to just bring out the beak there with the background. I just want to make it quite clear that it is the beak, um, or at least that's the, the line of the beak. And there we go, the same around here. I'm going to bring up the color again in a while. It's not the color I'm looking for, but it's where I'm going with it. There we go. And it's about trusting the process. So I know what I want. I know where I'm going. Sometimes I get it, sometimes I don't, but sometimes I get stuff that I couldn't even imagine I want. So that's how you learn. When I was in art college, what my tutor used to say was, try everything. Because if you don't try everything, you don't know if it works or not. Now, earlier on, I mentioned I was going to give a wash to something. And what I mean by a wash is, I'm gonna take this brush and I'm going to wet it and I'm going to pop it onto the ochre. Nice little bit of ochre, but I'm going to keep the, the ochre. There's going to be a lot of water on it, very little ochre, but it's going to be wet. So I want the pigment quality, of course, but as, as high as I can keep it. Using water can be challenging because it does thin out the, the uh, bonding of the, the acrylic, but also the pigment quality. But I really just want a nice gentle wash. And what I mean by wash, and that is a little bit too wet for me, so I'm going to take some of the the water off and now I'm back into it with a wash and it's just going over these sections of the swan like this exactly like this and it's just building up more definition into the feather part of the swan nice and gentle it's very little even in terms of noticing and that's exactly what I want to go for so I'm just going to bring this down here so this is a wash. I'm going to be doing another wash later with titanium white, but this is really just to give me some shape to the head of the swan, the head and neck. So I might just do another little quick wash there of ochre. There we go. Okay. Okay. So this is the shadow that I'm looking for. I'm going to bring this here and this bit up here. Brilliant. Nice definition. Okay. Amazing. So now what I want to do, I'm going to go and wash this brush and give another blast of my trusty hairdryer. And then we're going to get into more of the neck, more titanium white, more building it up. But it is nice and cool. I'm grabbing my size 10 filbert and I'm just going to get straight up titanium white and I'm going to like we did earlier building up the building up the feathers so nice and slow nice little brush strokes there we go and we're moving it into the background as well as you can see there so we're pretty much at the moment, I'm happy with the background. Now I could go over the background and I might have to do this part of it again. We shall see. There's no major rush with this at all. Again, like I keep saying, it's about having fun and going with the process. You don't have to finish it all in one sitting. You absolutely can, of course, but you don't have to. It's really, you can put it away, you can go back to it, you can take your time with it. So really we're just building up bit by bit the feather here.
So as you can see, we're just going, when we're going around the, 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 the line on the head, so kind of the crown part here, what I want to do is not be as, not have as much movement in it, as you can see, like on the neck. I really want it to be not quite flat either, kind of a nice mix between because I don't want it to look like the swan has frizzy hair. <laughs> of course, they don't have hair, but I don't want it to look like that. So we want it to be nice and flat here. And with this, we can really control the movement based on how we draw our lines here. So we can give nice shape to, again, a 2D painting, but we can really bring out a 3D look to it. As you can see here, I'm just moving the paintbrush and the strokes in different directions to give the look that I'm going for. There we are. Amazing. Okay. So there we go. So this is, is just the step-by-step -step process. Remember what we had at the start? We had a nice gray, gray swan that we could have kept going and, and made a black swan, of course but we wanted a white swan. So it just takes a little bit of time, a little bit of building up step by step. Now we still have a, a bit of a way to go, but we're getting there. And that's the most important thing. When I'm talking about the goal setting and getting to your goals, what I talk about is it's step by step, slowly, slowly, once you focus, once you focus on one thing or, or a few things that are kind of tied in together, you can get where you want to go. For instance, if I'm working on this painting and then I jump onto the horse and then I jump onto the fox and then I don't do anything of anything because I'm not focused, I'll get none of them done. But ma mainly when I'm painting a painting, I will only paint that painting. Sometimes I have a few on the go for various different reasons. If they're large paintings, they can take a bit of time. It's nice to kind of take your head out of them but that's really only when I'm working on a collection. So they're all working towards the same goal, which is an exhibition. And they all have the same purpose, really. But for this, if you just keep going with what you're doing, you'll get to the end. Once you stay focused on the goal that you have in mind. Now, as you can see, we're getting lots of different tones. We're getting lots of different highlights. You can almost run your fingers through the, the feathers here not quite finished yet. They're a bit too feathery, <laughs> if that makes sense for me. So what I'm going to do is come back to that in a few minutes. I wanna now move back to the beak of this swan. I'm gonna get a little bit of yellow and I want to just apply the yellow like I did earlier. Now, because I put a mix of titanium white with the orange that we made from the red and the yellow, this yellow is going to, because it's quite transparent, this yellow, some of the some of the paints that you use will be opaque and some will be much more transparent. So and some will be kind of a mix. So this one is almost would would give a lovely wash, actually, if you want it, if you mix it with a bit of water, but it will go over the colors beneath, but not block them in. It won't cover them up. Now, brilliant. What I want to do is grab some red and I'm going to mix this on the canvas and I'm going to bring it here mix it with that yellow, take a little bit of it off of too much color there. And I'm just going to paint this in. Now I'm aware the background is pink. So I'm trying to not bring it too close to the background. Now there we go. Okay, super. And what I'm going to do actually is because the background is pink and it's a pink that's blended from the same red that I'm using there on the beak. I'm going to make the background not white, but not as red. So there is a definition there. So there we are. Brilliant. I'm going to bring this around. Now don't worry too much if it's looking the way it is now. We are going to get a little bit of water allow this flow. I want a little bit more red as well. There we are. You can probably hear a bit of noise in the background. That is a pigeon that is looking in my skylight at me. There we go. Very nice pigeon. So there we are. I just want to really give this 
beak, the colour that it or allow it to kind of pop out. It was kind of getting lost there a little bit with all the reds. So there we are. I'm going to bring this up and into here. Super. Kind of mix this around. I don't want to go too close with the white, titanium white or the light pink to the neckline because I don't want to, I don't want to have the same issue there as I have up here. It's not even an issue. I mean, it's just personal preference. You, you could have very easily kept it the way it was and been happy with that. I just want a little bit more red. I'm going to pop that in here. It's a little bit too dry there for me. So I'm going to mix some water with it and it's just blending it in. I'm not coming too close to that beak again because that was why I started. So maybe a little bit more white. And this again is a bit of a process. It can be up, it can be down. It really depends on what you want as well. So this is all about you. There we are. Exactly what I'm looking for. Maybe a little bit more red up here. Actually, yeah, that'd be nice. Bring a little bit more red up here. Red sky at night. Oh my God. What's that? Sailor's delight. Okay, won't be a storm next day. <laughs> Unless it's the morning, I don't know. <laughs> First one. Now, what I'm gonna do is grab some more yellow and just bring this down here. Now, one of the other brushes that I ask you to, to get is a really small, triple zero, Windsor Newton, and it's a round head brush. The reason I wanted you to get this is it's for really, really fine detail. Not like if we were working on the horse, not that kind of fine detail that I need like long strands of hair. This, this wouldn't be great for that. It would be okay for it, it wouldn't be as good. But here, I just want to draw in the eye of the swan. Just draw around the eye. No, okay. I'm gonna make it a little bit pink as well not just titanium white. And I'm going to just wash that brush off. Don't leave this brush in a tub of water or a, 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 a liquid, anything. Remember I said earlier about putting it in your, your mugs or your glasses. Don't do that because it will break the, it'll twist the, the head of it, the, the bristles, and you'll never be able to use it again. So I'm just going to put a little line here, almost like eyelashes, a little line here. So we're building up the eye of the swan. Now I'm gonna come back into that as well. I'm gonna wash off this brush. Make sure that you wash off this brush. Tiny, there's probably 20 bristles on the top of that. So it's really fine. I've got to look after it. Now what I wanna do is grab some black, nice, strong Mars black, no other mix with it. And I just wanna come in around the bill. We're going, this is a bill, aren't we? Um, again, you guys will know because I've put up the name of it, but. I'm going in and around this and the same around here and here. Now I'm moving around the canvas. This is, when I use huge canvases, it can be really hard to kind of get around it like this. This is so lovely because I can kind of just move it to wherever I want it to go. And I'm just going to come in to these nice and gently, there we go. I'm just slowly building up. If you've seen the video on the fox, you'll see how I do this with the fox's little nose. And it's nice and gently building it up. The same with the horse actually around its muzzle. I've, I've used a similar kind of bringing it up, bringing it down, just getting exactly the tone I'm looking for. There we go. So. I'm going to, with this lovely brush that I use, and I, again, I use these brushes all the time. I love them and they're, they're only a few euro. And I'm just going to flick this into, very gently into the feathers here, really nice and gently. I'm gonna bring the feathers up so it's, it's a nice blend. I'm gonna do the same up here. I'm just gonna gently bring it in here there we go. And I'm going to go into the eye as well. There we are. Super. Some really nice marks that are being left behind. Gives you such nice control. And that's the lovely thing about this brush. Gives you nice control over where you're going and what you're doing. Amazing. Okay. 
Brilliant, we're really, really getting somewhere. Now, what I want to do is, because we're not quite there, of course, yet, but we are getting up to the end of it, and that's the amazing thing about painting and using a hairdryer. It can help you so much. So we are coming up to the very last um, period of this. So what I want to do is just give more definition here to the feathers on this swan. So there we go, little bit by bit, amazing. Building it up here. Now I'm using that size 10 filbert still because I want the control and the, the area covered that this allows me to cover in terms of brush strokes. There we are. Super, now I am going to come into this as you can see, we're popping out here on the neckline. I am going to come into the feathers with a few different techniques. We're not quite done on the feathers yet in terms of techniques. So there's more we can do, but I do want to make it look a bit more structured and white around here. So I'm just using straight up titanium white here, nothing else. And I'm just nice and gradually going over and over and over the same kind of areas bit by bit, building it up. Now, I really wanna make sure that this section is dry for my next step. So I'm going to go and get the hairdryer again and pop it in and give it a bath. Awesome, so what I'm going to do is another wash. And earlier on, we used a wash with ochre and this wash is going to be titanium white. Very same way, we're just going to get a little bit of a, a wet brush we're gonna get a little bit of titanium white. We're going to make sure that it's not overloaded with titanium white. It's just like a milky kind of consistency. And I'm just going to paint in where I want the main highlights to be. And what this does is it covers in some of the, the undertone, undercoat that we, we put originally, some of the gray that I still want to come through but I don't want as much as we applied obviously earlier because we've gone over it a few times, but I still see a bit too much of it. So this is going to take that down. I'm gonna do a little bit more, awesome. And what I'm going to do now is just pop back in with some more, a little bit more pigment on this. It's still a wash, but it's a thicker wash. So a wash is almost like laying a veil over something. You can still see it through it, the veil, but the veil is also obscuring some of it. So nice and gentle and soft. There we go. That's exactly what we're looking for. Okay. Now what I wanna do now is just get more titanium white, a little bit of a wash. So the first wash we used was really little titanium white, really little pigmentation. The second one had a little bit more and this third one is not quite full on titanium white. There is still water on it. So it's a light wash, but there's more titanium. So it's gonna leave be behind more pigment and it's gonna cover in more of what we cover over. So there we go. And you can just bring it down nicely. There we are. Yeah. So as you can see, we're definitely building up the, the neckline here. So I'm just gonna have a look at the swan. There we are, brilliant, okay. So, so what I wanna do is I just want to bring a little bit more out here. And I'm just gonna outline that myself. So there we are, super, yeah, definitely wanna go there with that. And if I didn't wanna go there there with that and kind of give more neck and, and back of the head of, of the swan, what I would do is just paint over with the pink or the, the red that I have in the background, but I do wanna come out here. So what I wanna do is nice and gentle, just bring this out, nice, there we go exactly what I want just to give. And that again is the beauty of acrylic. You can add to it, you can take away from it, it's wonderful. Okay, I'm gonna bring this down and we are putting this one here. Okay. Now I'm 
just making the neck slightly thicker than it was. There we are. Okay. All the way down. Now, if you're using a larger canvas, which you can absolutely do, you can come back to this later with a larger canvas. You can bring in the body of the, the swan. You can put in other swans. You can really do whatever you want. Now, yeah, exactly what I was looking for. Now, I might flatten this part as well, just to give it a bit more shape. There we go. Not as round. Okay. Perfect. Brilliant. Now, what I want to do is come back into this beak part, because I'm not 100% done with the beak, and I'm going to get this paintbrush again. I'm going to get some white, I'm going to get some yellow, I'm going to mix them together, titanium white and yellow, probably two parts yellow, one titanium white, and I'm going to bring that in here, because that's what I want this to look like, yes. I'm just going to bring this in around here. Right. And here. And then what I also want to do is just get a bit of red now, mix it into the mixture. It's a tiny little bit of red. I want to bring that in here. A bit too much paint on my brush, so I take it off. Building up this tone. Amazing. Now, what I want to do is grab some titanium white and I'm going to come into this with the titanium white around here. There we go. Let's give it nice highlights. And now we're gonna focus on the black bill part. And again, we're coming very close to the end of this. You can pause at any time. You can take your time with this. You don't have to go as quickly as, as I go. The reason I'm getting it done so quickly is because I've done so many paintings. I've been painting for so long. I know what the techniques are that I'm using. It's like when you start anything, it takes a while to get into your flow. And then once you're in your flow, you fly. So I'm going to, that's black that I've just been laying. Now I've taken a little bit of titanium white. So I'm gonna make a bit of a gray. There we go, just for a bit of a highlight. There we are. And the same here, a little bit of highlight here. And we're gonna do the same here on the, the nostril part. And then the same throughout. So just these marks. Okay. All the way over. Bit by bit, nice and slowly. And we build it up. Okay. And I'm going to come back into the eye now and I'm just going to give it a little bit of a curve here. There we are. Not quite done with the eye yet, but we're getting there. Um, little dots of titanium white. I'm just dabbing it here because this section of, of the swan is a bit lumpy, I suppose. So I'm just putting little dabs down and I'm going around little bits of highlight that are not quite full titanium white, they're grays as well. There we go, it, or they're more gray rather. But I also wanna pop a bit of a highlight onto the bill, this part. But I want it to be more, I'm gonna use the filbert brush that's nice and washed off. And I'm gonna get some straight up titanium white, but I want it to be like a wash, so here we go. Yeah, so this is what I want. Now I have to be delicate with this because it may go where I don't want it to go, but no, it's it's doing what I want. Super. There we go. Okay. Now 
gonna dry off the brush there just in my hand. Um, you can put it on a on a one of your cloths if you like, and that's just what I want there. Not done with the beak yet, but it's getting there. Now with that wash I've just created, I'm just going to go in here as well, add it in. It's not overloading this black. Yeah, okay, super. What I now want to do is bring this brush back into it, grab some titanium white, and I'm gonna go in really closely in here, and I'm just gonna bring it up and into here. Now this brush has a little bit of black on it, it wasn't supposed to, so it's coming out gray, so I'm gonna wash it properly. And you'll find that sometimes, sometimes you'll have a, a bit of a load of the paint beforehand on your, on your brush. So just make sure that you know that you're in full control of this process. And we just go up and into the eye, perfect. In here as well, it's a bit too gray for me. And I wanna take that down. And I'm gonna do this all the places that I want this to be much more structured. There we go, much more defined. So I'm adding in a brush stroke by brush stroke, little bits of movement, little marks that kind of indicate that it might be real feather. There we go. There we are, super. same up and around the head and this brush will allow me now as I'm going around the outline of the of the swan to kind of just flick out little bits that I want bit by bit to make it look like it's a rustly feathered swan um, there we go so imagine the children of Lear as we spoke about earlier in, in Celtic mythology Irish mythology that were forced to fly around different different seas around Ireland for hundreds of years. Imagine the blustery sea that this one is on. Okay, there we go. Okay, so I'm really just drawing in now with this brush because it allows me, as I say, that, that control that I'm looking for. I'm drawing in exactly where I want the feathers to fall. There we go. Come in here and flick it out here, and it's a nice. There we go, super. So this is really giving me what I want. Okay, perfect. Now what I'm going to do is take a lot of the pigment, the the white paint, titanium pigment off this brush, and then with what's left on really softly. I'm going to just brush it on here and give little bits of movement, curved lines that gives that bit of definition and highlight. There we go, as you can see that happening there. Now, brilliant. I'm gonna use the same brush after I've washed it off and I'm gonna grab some more black. And I'm gonna come in back up to this section and there are parts of this that aren't quite the definition that I want. So I'm going to move in here exactly like this and this. Yeah. yeah. Exactly like this. Perfect. And back up and into the eye. I'm not going to touch that eye at the moment with this brush because it is a bit broad for the size of that little eye. So I'm gonna come back into that with that triple zero that we had, the, the round head. But this is just giving me what I want around here. Now, okay. I'm just gonna draw in here. Imagine it's almost like the, a marker that we're using. It's not quite a marker. Now I've used Sharpies in the past on paintings, but the problem with Sharpies is they're permanent and you can't go over them because they come through the paint. So don't use Sharpies unless you know what you're doing and you, you're happy with the line that you're, you're putting down. Because when I was doing it, 
I wasn't happy always with the line and I tried to go over it and then the Sharpie would pop up a few days later and it would ruin the painting. So there we go. But you can use a different material or a different medium, mediums, media on this. So you can use, uh, I know a, a fabulous artist who uses um, acrylic paint, but also uses oil pastels. So what I said earlier that my art tutor, my painting teacher always taught me was to try everything. And it's only by trying it, you'll know if it works for you or not. Now, before I get back into that eye, I just want to grab a little bit of yellow because I'm kind of liking the movement of the yellow here and where it's laid. And I'm just going to bring it in here. Yeah, that's exactly what I want. And that'll go nicely. As I said earlier, like the other yellow, I'm just taking a bit of the, the paint off just quickly. Like the other yellow, it will go nicely over the titanium white that we laid. Although it was only a light wash, it will still go over it nicely. Yeah, exactly. The same. I'm just going to grab a little bit more black and I'm just going to come into this part of the bill and make it a bit more curved because it is looking a little bit sharp. I don't want it that sharp. Although there is a curve in it, I don't want it as curved. This is not a toucan. This is, this is a swan. Okay, there we go. No. Okay. Yeah, more, more like it, very much so. And grab me that triple zero. And what I'm going to do is grab some black. And I'm going to mix some a little bit of water with the black and make it really flowy because what I want to do is draw in the line here into the eye. Nice and delicate. This takes a nice steady hand. So if you've had all the caffeine I've had today and it's really early, steady hands may not work, but it's going with, it's going well. Now the eye is there. Now, I'm just going to do that. That's pretty much what we're looking for for the eye. Now, while I have that nice steady hand working for me, because it won't last forever, I'm just going to draw in and around here and do the same here. Now, this brush is already, it's new and it's already starting to lose some of its form. That's okay, but just be aware of that. You have to be so delicate with these brushes, th these ones in particular, because they're so fine. There we go, I want that there. Okay, now, okay, perfect. I'm gonna wash this brush off, I'm not done with it yet. What I want to do is get some red on the top of it, a little bit of white, make a nice pink, not too pink or not too too light though i want you to see that it is a bit pink here in the eye there we go and then what i'm going to do is wash it off again and i'm going to get just straight up titanium white and i'm going to come in and i'm going to just leave little marks here now that really bring out the eye when i'm painting a painting what i love to do is paint in the eyes because it really brings the paintings to life. So there we go. I'm going to go around this painting now with this thin triple zero round brush and just draw in some highlights. On the horse painting that I use, uh, that I've, I've painted, I use the other brush that I, I keep saying I love using, which I do, but I'm not gonna, because this painting, this, this one is so delicate and quite small and some of the details are quite fine. I'm not going to use that paintbrush for the lines on all of it. Um, I'm just going to use this round brush. It gives you great mark making. As I say, I'm just going to bring that in. Super. So what I'm going to do now, just to kind of tie this up, because we are pretty much coming to the end of it, what I'm going to do is grab more titanium white, 
and I'm just going to go in to the parts of this, like here, just bring out the highlight. Yes, I'm using this brush now, of course, but I really just want to bring out the highlights. There we go. same around the eye here we are in here now what I what I often say when I'm painting is um, it can be hard to know when to stop and a lot of artists will tell you this they they just don't know when to stop so I'm going to do a little bit more and then I will be ready to stop but it's certainly getting to that point where we are done Okay. Okay, brilliant. So this is just a little bit more yellow coming up and in here. Okay, so I don't want it too white either. I'm gonna grab my filbert, my number 10. I'm going to grab some red mixed with yellow a nice orange and a little bit of titanium white and we are going to not overload the brush of course but we're just going to bring that in here there we are and now a nice blend okay and finally just to finish it off let's see yeah exactly what i'm looking for to finish it off what i'm going to do is just go around it now with the this brush with titanium white and just draw in some feathers there we go okay Just going to go around the eye area as well, just to kind of bring feathers into that. There we go. Now, finally, I'm just going to bring a little bit of movement down here. And just to finish off, a little bit of white here. Okay, and maybe a little bit in the eye. <laughs> See, the thing about it is you can go and you can go and you can go. I wanna do a little bit more around the bill with, with some titanium white, but yeah, this is what I want. You can go and you can go and you can go and never be finished. And sometimes it's okay to call it and say, I'm done. So, okay. And I'm going to call that pretty much, not right now, <laughs> a little bit more work to do. I'm just gonna grab the big old filbert again. I'm gonna get some titanium white, nice lumps of titanium white, and I'm gonna bring it down just where I want the white highlight to be on this swan. There we go right there amazing okay okay exactly like this now again you can go at this and go at this and go at this and build it up and build it up and build it up and never be finished But I think if I get the hairdryer now, what I'm going to do is 
dry it off, give it a last wash, and then we are good to go. Okay, brilliant. So what I'm gonna do now is do another titanium white wash. Grab that big old brush, there we go. And I'm going to bring it this way. Amazing. Okay. I was almost gonna put this wash on this. And then I stopped myself because that is not what I wanted to do. Okay, let's get this here. <laughs> now, and we are done. So I hope you enjoyed that process. I certainly did. And it was a lovely, lovely hour or so of painting, which I always enjoy. Really lovely process. Congratulations if you followed all the way through and you got to the end and you have your swan. What you can do now is, is hang it, uh, pop it up on a wall, gift it to somebody and yes, well done.